Alrighty then, it's the 4K Q&A. Long overdue, but hey, better late than never. Uh, there's like 103 questions here, gathered from the May video I put out last year. I asked for questions then, but never got around to making one. And added it to the tally I got this time, giving me 103 questions. So, we might as well get started. Uh, oh, thank you, by the way, for the 4K subs. I thanked you before, but I never thought I'd get this high, so it's worth thanking you again. Uh, so, I've divided these into categories. Um, season 4, general pony-related stuff, and then off-topic. So, we can go from most important to least, based on me just finishing season 4 by the time I wanted to start doing Q&A. Okay, this season has been likely the best one for Spike, so I wonder how in retrospect your opinion on Spike may have been affected this season. Do you think this was his best season yet? He did have some pretty fine episodes actually. Um, I've always thought of uh, Spike's best performance though as being in Lesson Zero. He was the voice of reason throughout the whole thing. He earned his bit of snark at the end because he was absolutely right. <laughs> and how he looked out for Twilight, told Celestia what was going on. He, there was nothing off about him at all in that episode. And I liked how Twilight gave him a hug at the end to show her appreciation. Uh, but he, like, uh, inspiration manifestation uh, splits people because they kind of get the perspective wrong. Um, they th they constantly like uh, belittle Spike for being an idiot and keeping going with Rarity, even though she's clearly getting out of control. But his speech at the end sums it up perfectly. All throughout the episode, he was afraid of hurting her feelings and just wanted to support her, even when things were getting out of hand. And, you know, he thought that was the friendly thing to do. Spike learned a friendship lesson. Like, if sometimes you have to tell them, hey, stop, you're fucking shit up. You know, I, I thought it was really good. And despite the cringe moments of Equestria games, it was meant to be like that. It was Spike having another crisis of self-confidence, but a lot more believable than it was in Power Ponies. You know, just because he couldn't help clean a castle, he all of a sudden felt like the biggest loser on the planet. That just didn't sit right with me. But, uh, anyway, um, it, he also gave a great speech at the end about how all the praise in the world means nothing unless you believe it yourself. Yeah, so with the combination of Inspiration and Equestria games, twice, two episodes in a row, um, I think Season 4 might have been Spike's best season, although Season 1 has the best Spike snark. Best to worst key episodes, key givers, and keys themselves. Well, uh, as for key episodes, I would place Pinky Pride, Twilight's Kingdom, Leap of Faith, Rarity Takes Manhattan, Rainbow Falls, and It Ain't Easy Being Breezies. Now, the reason for this is that Pinky Pride is probably my favourite single episode of the show so far. It takes everything I love about Pinkie Pie, smacks it together with Weird Al, gives me gorgeous earworm songs, and it becomes the perfect episode. That's really how I feel about it. And so, how could I not have it be my favourite key episode, let alone favourite episode as a whole? Seriously, if I had one episode to be trapped with on a desert island as my only form of entertainment, Pinkie Pride, all day, every day. Uh, Twilight's Kingdom I put next. I love it just as much as Pinky Pride, but I feel like because it was a finale, the story elements sometimes um, like weighed it down, but not in the sense you might think. Uh, some people will know what I mean. Um, there's also the fact I don't. I want to avoid placing it on too high a pedestal just because it's a finale. You know, it's like that shouldn't just be a free pass to be the best. I mean, that Dragon Ball scene was absolutely epic, and the animation was the best the show's ever put out. But 
If we're going on pure feeling and enjoyment and emotion, I'd say Pinkie Pride still tops it. And so then we had the middle two of Leap of Faith and Rarity Takes Manhattan. Both compelling episodes for Rarity and Applejack's flaws. Um, so they perfectly sit in the middle for me. And then the weaker two are Rainbow Falls and It Ain't Easy Being Breezy. Now I'm not harsh on Rainbow Falls. I don't see nearly as many problems as everyone else does, because I understand why she'd have loyalty ties to both sides, and she was kind of uh, bailed out morally by Fluttershy saying it wouldn't matter if she went to Cloudsdale, Ponyville wouldn't care. So that's good. It shows them being true friends to her, and if she'd have just been honest with her feelings, she'd have been able to do so, probably. And. It ain't easy being breezies, I actually quite enjoyed because I like cute things. You know, <laughs> that's part of why I gave this show a chance. You know, so it's just, you know, putting it last on the list doesn't mean I hate it, it just means the others topped it. So, yeah, it's an okay episode. Um, key Givers, well, Discord as a character is one of my favourites, so of course he'd be the top Key Giver. Yeah, I'm sure people might not have been expecting me to count the finale as a key episode, but I do because someone received a key, you know, regardless of context. Because otherwise, Cheese Sandwich would have been first for being Weird Al, but as it stands, he's second. For obvious reasons. Coco Camel, the cutie patootie, is in third. Uh, Silver Shill, who I think is very underrated because he only appeared for a short while in his true personality, and guys don't tend to be remembered as well as the females unless they have a quirk like, yup. Um, so, yeah, and then Spitfire, um, she put herself down a little bit. Um, in Rainbow Falls because of the way she treated Sorin. Like, th this is. These questions are asked in context of the key episodes, so. Spitfire goes down a bit in context of key episodes. And then, of course, Seabreeze, who's just okay. Uh, Vegeta voice notwithstanding. Uh, obviously, belonging to Weird Al, I've had Boneless be the best key. And because it's the most original, I've, I've based this ranking on how they differ to what you might expect a key to turn into, like out of the normal. So the rubber chicken gets first, the spool of thread second, Scorpan's medallion, and Wonderbolt's pin, and the bit third, fourth, and fifth because they're all metals. And then the symbolic uh, flower comes in last because. You know, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna use the flower to save the day. Uh, what episode would you most want to drop from season four, and what single part episode would you make a two parter to take its place? I would probably drop Some Pony to Watch Over Me, because Applejack's behaviour in the first half was cringeworthy. The awesome Chimera and Fire Swamp could then be used in a different episode. I would then make Power Ponies the two-parter, because it needed a longer runtime to fully utilise the superhero thing and show more action from the ponies. As it is, it feels like a lot of potential was wasted for what could have been an absolutely epic superhero fight. What are your top five episodes of season four? Well, for reasons stated, Pinkie Pride, followed by Twilight's Kingdom, then the Discord shenanigans of Three's a Crowd, then the Scooby-Doo shenanigans of Castlemania, and the schooling shenanigans of Testing Testing 1, 2, 3. If you've been with my channel a while, you know I love damn shenanigans. And now we move on to the general pony-related stuff. Have or will you watch G1, G2, or G3? I've seen glimpses through other commentators, and that was more than enough. I do not think I will ever commentate on that or watch it. <laughs> you know, fair enough for the little girls it was aired to at the time, but not for me. Not for me. Best songs of the series. Now you see, this kind of question I simply can't answer. I'm too much of a fan to choose between them. If I start listing off songs I love, by the time I'm done I'd have listed every single song from the show. You know, I even like the song that the Cutie Mark Crusaders sang in episode 18 of season 1. You know, it was intentionally bad, but because of that, I was able to enjoy it. 
What do you want from Season 5 and what can MLP do to avoid getting a rut like Simpsons and Family Guy did? Well, after Season 4 ramped up the animation quality many times over, experimented further with song genres and a story arc, and even worked in a DBZ S fight scene, I'd just ask for more of the same. Season 4 had some phenomenal moments. As for avoiding a rut, I think they should carry on doing it the way they've already been doing. With season 2, the writers obviously gained more freedom. Twilight got a very creepy episode dedicated to her losing her mind in lieu of Party of One. There was character development out the wazoo, lots of holiday and world building episodes, important new characters being introduced, villains cropping up again, and all of the main six beginning to write friendship letters. Nothing really pushed the envelope, so to speak, but overall things were definitely different to how they were in Season 1 and the show was progressing, changing things up. Season 3 tossed us Twilight's ascension to princesshood, which was a HUGE change to the status quo and caused a HUGE war within the fandom. But I feel like this in itself was a positive betrayal of expectations for a show like this. Twilight actually completed her studies and essentially graduated from Celestia's teachings. There aren't many shows that would allow their characters to progress in such a way. Their whole way of life leading up to something before the series ends. But Twilight doing so adds credit and believability to all she's been through and achieved so far. It adds the weight to it of when we look back, we know it all helped her lead up to and accomplish something. Her princesshood feels deserved, like a reward for a journey well done. Aside from Discord's first step into redemption territory, which was another bold and fandom dividing move, Season 3 also gave us a hint of progression for Dash's dream, with her attending the Wonderbolt Academy and smashing all their records. Season 4 gave us the things I mentioned before, plus further development for characters like Dash and Discord. Dash is dangerously close to having her own ambitions realised, now it's assumed she's a part of the Wonderbolt Reserves. Discord also took another few steps down the path of true redemption, feeling genuinely remorseful during and after his betrayal, and being invited into the main six group hug, like everything was fine. A big change up for this season was giving up the elements of harmony, which was met with great shock because no one expected it. Of course, some new power was always destined to take its place, but the concept of making it an underlying art with the keys was a great move. To a child, it wouldn't have been as obvious as it was to us. They'd be able to tell the items were special somehow, but the average kid wouldn't be likely to predict they'd contribute to beating the bad guy in the finale. There was some kind of subtle brilliance to that. This season also dealt with Twilight's issues and teething problems with her princesshood, such as being mobbed by fans, restricted time with her friends thanks to royal duties, the royal duties themselves, and eventually the feeling that her role in Equestria didn't amount to much at all. Considering the fact that the fans have been complaining up until then that she hadn't done much princess stuff, this was obviously done very intentionally. It gave her doubts a ring of truth, and after the finale, Twilight assumed her official role to be the Princess of Friendship, bringing her studies and her character full circle. I don't think many would disagree with me when I said that if MLP ended right there, it wouldn't feel wrong. There was a sense of completion at the end of the episode that fits the mood of a series finale. But yeah, to answer both of the original questions, I'd recommend the show carry on exactly like it's already been doing. I have complete faith in what Season 5 will bring to the table. If ponies drove real or made up silly cars that match their personalities, what would some of the ponies drive? Hmm. Well, I know Pinkie Pie might drive a clown car. Uh, Rainbow Dash, if they had been invented, would want a hover car. Uh, if not, probably something sporty, like, you know, F1 cars, stuff like that. Um... Twilight would drive some kind of smart car or something. I just say that because of the word smart. I don't know how intellectual they actually are. Uh, maybe a bookmobile. That would be fun. <laughs> yes, actually. Twilight would drive a bookmobile. Um, Fluttershy is a tough one. Um, maybe a beetle because it reminds her of a cute little bug. 
uh, who have I missed? Uh, Rarity would drive some sort of uh, posh car, or or she'd have one of those um, hatchbacks that you see footballers' wives driving. Oh, did I say what Applejack would drive? <laughs> I imagine Applejack driving something fun like the uh, wooden car from uh, Wacky Racers. Yeah, that sort of thing. Uh, maybe even the apple cart from the fair. Big Mac versus Maud Pie versus Bulk Biceps. Now, the original comment put this in the context of a deathmatch, I think. I have a feeling that despite his longer stamina, Big Mac would eventually succumb to Bulk Biceps' raw power. But Maud, who was silently watching the whole time, would surprise him with her strength and break his neck or something. At least that's what I'd assume, in my ideal scenario. Pinkie Pie or Discord, who is more random? Well, at first I thought this was a tough call, and it still is. Pinkie Pie may be the most random pony you could ever meet, but Discord is the very embodiment of randomness. It is a tough call. But, but, based on betrayal of expectations, and leaving everyone else flabbergasted, whenever they speak, it would have to be Pinkie. You know, by defying everything a pony is, fourth wall and all, with some of the things she does, it's more random because it's unexpected in place of someone who's supposed to be random. Do you get my logic there? Hope you do. Uh, favorite fan works. Now, unlike a lot of reactors, you probably know that I stick to a very select few things to watch. Things like Ultra Fast Pony and Adventure Time when I'm not watching the show. That's because I like the feeling of just sitting, relaxing, and watching the things uh, instead of reacting to them. Because <laughs> I, d I don't consider them like on a big scale. And of course, I'll react to the next Ponies anthology whenever it comes out. That's always good. But if I had to say what my favourite fan works are, even though I've not seen much, um, stuff like Ponies the Anthology, a Mentally Advanced Series, Rainbow Dash Presents, Ultra Fast Pony, you know, a bridgey sort of stuff. I love a bridge series, I follow so many. Um, I, I would say I liked Snowdrop, but I did at the time, but then as I saw it for the emotionally manipulative kind of thing that it was, I kind of fell out of love with it. I especially love how Friendship is Witchcraft poked fun at it. Uh, but, but yeah, it's a sweet story, but I, I forgot about it over time. Uh, favorite bronies on YouTube? The bronies I'm sub to are mostly fellow reactors, and there's quite a lot of them. If I had to narrow it down, the people I enjoy the most at this present moment in time were people like Ladix, Atticus Munson, Rarity Dash, Pie Dislike a Swag, and Shanmul1995. This is always subject to change because I love content put out by all the reactors I'm sub to, or I wouldn't be sub to them, and I have great respect for every single one of them and what they do. It's just that at the moment, those are the people whose uploads I'm most looking forward to at the moment. What celebrity would make a great pony voice? I would have said Weird Al if I was asked this question before season 4. And Robin Williams is no longer with us, so I guess my third choice would be someone like Jim Carrey. What pony would you most want for dinner with your parents? How would you introduce her and what would you make for everyone? Ah, uh, this kind of question. I wouldn't want that honestly. The situation of bringing a pony to dinner sounds too awkward and strange to deal with for someone with social problems like me. She's on her own. And I don't cook, come on. <laughs> oh, that's, that's kind of pathetic, but oh well. Name six ponies you want as main characters if the main six were no longer the focus. Well, the same six everyone else chooses. <laughs> I don't really pay much attention to the background characters. I just think, oh, fandom says she's popular, okay, thumbs up, hello, hi, how are you? Yeah, you know, I don't get invested in it, that's why I didn't freak out when Derpy came back. I just don't care that much. Doesn't mean I don't care at all, but I don't see why I should flip out about it if I'm not that invested. So yeah, name your favourite non-CMC falls. Uh, Pipsqueak and Button Mash. 
they're fun. If you had a party, what pony would plan it, and what pony would perform at it? That's so easy! I'd want Pinkie Pie to do both of those things, because she somehow could. She does it every day. She plans, and then she performs. But if that doesn't count, if I have to choose two ponies, even easier, the team-up of Pinkie Pie and Cheese. What plot do you want to see in Equestria Girls that would never work in a pony world? Well, I'm sorry, but I can't think of anything on that front. They did pretty good with that whole Battle of the Bands thing, and that would have been a suggestion of mine if they hadn't already done it. But yeah, you know, you can't like have a sporting competition because of Equestria Games. You know, it's feasible in a pony world. Um, I'm sure there's some form of crime lords in the pony world. You couldn't really do a mob like thing, and I don't think they could with the age rating. You know, it is hard. Very hard. I'll let them think of things like that. Now that Equestria Girls 3 has been confirmed, we'll see where they go with it. Uh, what would you trade to gain Fluttershy as a roommate? I'm assuming you mean what's the maximum I would give up to have her as a roommate. As for all I know, it could only cost me a stick of gum, such as the vagueness of your question. Even still, I'm having trouble understanding the wording of this question. It needs a specific sacrifice mentioning for me to consider my options with. Sorry, but as it is, this question is unanswerable, because it doesn't give me any set values to work with. Who wants a flugelhorn? I don't have a use for one. I don't play instruments. Pinky can have it or something. What are your expectations for Season 5? Like I said before, I expect similar to what we got for Season 4. Big action, super songs, fantastic animation quality, and so on. I expect that MLP is in its golden period right now, in the sense of ascending beyond its roots as a kids show. Another expectation I have is another period of fandom drama when the 100th episode airs. Those who are spoiled on it know what's coming, and the danger it poses for headcanons. Be sure to pack a helmet when the time comes. What is your wish list for Season 5? Things you'd like to see happen in the show, but may or may not. Well, for starters, I want an episode where Discord isn't being difficult for the sake of being difficult, showing that he values their friendship more now, and at the same time, the main six minus Fluttershy aren't treating him with open distrust and contempt like they did in the Season 4 opener. It would really help ease fears of his super nice turnaround and moment in the Season 4 finale being retconned out of existence. You guys pulled him over for a group hug. You cannot turn around and cast him away after this. Next, I want to return for Cheese Sandwich, no matter how minor his role. I'm also hoping for more visits to far out less discussed lands like Saddle Arabia, Mertania, all those foreign places. Expand the world's geography beyond the country of Equestria. Do you have a film fiction account or write fan fiction at all? Yes, I do have a film fiction account. Like my YouTube channel, my account there is called Luffy is Cool and it has the same display picture. I haven't committed to writing anything yet, but I do have one or two ideas stored away somewhere, including Discord for getting Fluttershy's birthday and them having a fallout. What character do you want to see return in Season 5? Aside from Cheese Sandwich, I also want to see what Trixie's been getting up to now that she's no longer beefing with Twilight. Who knows, she might be touring a legitimate show and we get to see her perform it. That would be great. Which of Fluttershy's alter egos do you love the best? Flutterbat, Flutterhulk, Flutterbreezy, Fluttertree, or Flutterbitch? You forgot Flutterguy, which would have been my choice. In this instance, I guess I'll pick Flutterbat because her bat design was very cool and I wish that they'd return to it at some point. Which song from Rainbow Rocks is your favourite? Under our spell, because the rhythm of the song and the vocal work really does make it an enticing listen that pulls you in. It also helps us as a kick-ass tournament montage going on at the same time. I always enjoy watching that part, especially through commentaries. I, dude, 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 just listen. It's amazing. 
Are you a fan of any brony analysts? If so, which ones do you like the best? Although I disagree with his stance and opinion on certain episodes, mainly the big ones, I really enjoy Tommy Oliver and the way he points out all the good things about Rarity's episodes that people subconsciously overlook because they want to dislike her. I already didn't mind Rarity at all, but after watching this guy's videos I saw her in a whole new light and liked her even more. Seriously, check out this guy's defences of Rarity, he words it really well. Who drew your OC? A very nice lady who goes by the YouTube name of Fireface82, all one word. She was my 2000th subscriber and I congratulated her for it on her page. Out of the blue during our conversation she told me that she was drawing an OC for me. And that was that, it's been my avatar ever since. I'm really thankful to her for that because I don't have the artistic skills to create one myself and it was perfect. I, I'm never changing my avatar. What are the best and worst ideas for future MLP season spin-offs movies and generations? Are we speaking in hypotheticals here? Because I don't go browsing forums for ideas. Uh, so if we're just thinking what the best and worst possible thing would be. Uh, the best idea for future MLP would to be continue as they've been doing like I stated before. I'm extremely satisfied with the franchise's direction at the moment and now it keeps getting more epic. The worst idea would be if, say, Generation 5 started reverting back to the ways of earlier prissy generations. It would undo all of the hard work Season 4's, uh, the Generation 4 has put forth. That's a lot of 4's. Planning on reacting to any MLP fan content besides UFP and MLP episodes in the future? If yes, which ones? <laughs> Building on what I said before, uh, whenever Friendship is Witchcraft puts out another episode, I might be inclined to do that. Otherwise, I'm thinking about reacting to the next anthology. Other than that, I don't have much on my radar that I'd be willing to react to. What did you think of A Very Minty Christmas? As much as you like watching other commentators, I know you must have seen it at least once by now. I actually haven't seen it. I just didn't have much of a desire to watch it, even through commentary. Now that you've reminded me of it, I might go ahead and watch all the reactions to it someday soon. But, but you know, thousands of small videos come through all the time, so you don't really know which ones are worth checking out. So if there's not much desire in the first place, I'm not going to see it, you know? But if, if you're saying it like that, I guess it's one of the good ones, so I will head to it when I can. Which pony has your favourite accent? Fancy Pants, with his dapper British charm. Make up some Equestria Games events and tell me who you'd like to see compete in them. I'm not that good at coming up with stuff like this, uh, but because of how well Apple Bloom did with Granny Smith in Leap of Faith, I think I'd enter her for synchronised swimming. I think she'd do really well. Which three MLP characters would you most like to see have a really horrible day? Ha ha ha. Diamond Tiara, Siri Polomare, and one of those stupid valley girls that cut in front of Fluttershy. All bitches that deserve a comeuppance. Because Trixie has been forgiven, Gilda was just a grump, she wasn't really you know, someone who deserves to have a horrible day, she just needed to accept that ponies weren't on her level. <laughs> And though I guess, you know, if there was an honourable mention, maybe Gilda, maybe. There have been plenty of episodes featuring just two or three of the main cast, but if you could ask for an episode that grouped two of the main six and one minor or background character, who do you think would make the most interesting group? Well, the fanboy in me wants a Pegasus trio with Fluttershy, Rainbow and Derpy, Adventures in the Clouds. Otherwise, I'd like to see Applejack, Pinky and Maud doing some research into their family history. You'd have the silly one, the stoic one, and poor Applejack in the middle. It would make for some good comedy. Which pony is most often accidentally cute, and which one is most often accidentally sexy? Hmm... Fluttershy is almost always cute, so I guess even when she's doing it accidentally, it doesn't really count. Otherwise, she'd get it but I'll go with Pinky. 
You know, some of the things she does, even in randomness, make her come off as adorable. Um, as for accidentally sexy, maybe Pinkie Pie again. I, I mean, that scene with Applejack in Simple Ways, it was like meant to be ironically sexy. Even though a lot of uh, Weird Brent found it sexy, you know, did it, it wasn't an accident. No way. They fully intended that. So it doesn't count, you see. Uh, so, you know, the, the pouty faces Rarity makes, she dresses up in all those outfits and stuff. That's no accident. They're trying to make her cute and appealing. Right, so, for Accidentally Sexy, it's got to be Pinky. Uh, especially for this little outfit right here. What's your favourite MLP fanfiction? So far, the one I'm currently reading and doing a poor job on keeping track of. It's called Three Wishes, the Cutie Mark Crusaders Before They Change the World. I'll get back to recording my readings of that as soon as I can. As long as all my other commitments stop being bitches to me. Uh, favorite UFP character, favorite UFP episode. Mobster Applejack is my favorite character. It's such an original take on it, and it works so well with the context of her having a massive, quote, family around her farm. And my favorite overall episode might be the hip hop happening. To present an entire episode through rapping was a brilliant idea because the characters pulled it off so well with their personalities, and Wacob does a great job with lyrics when he makes his musical episodes. Uh, what do you think Wacob should do with season 4 for Ultra Fast Pony? I honestly have no clue. It's fresh territory that no abridger has touched yet. I'm sure that the freedom of material for both clips and jokes will result in even better episodes than before. Uh, if you could ship any two ponies from UFP, who would you ship and why? There isn't a lot of potential there, uh, but maybe Rarity and Applejack? I mean, Rarity is a masochist who takes pleasure in being hurt, so perhaps a violent mobster would be a great match if she wanted to play rough. That's all I got. Would you go to Equestria if you were given the chance? Depends on how long we're talking about. I mean, if you mean permanently, then it depends what point of my life you catch me in. If I was depressed and alone, I know the pony world will make me feel happy again. But if I was already happy and with family and friends, would I have to leave them behind? Because I don't want to do that. You know, it's tough. You, you need to be a bit more specific, I'm afraid. What other MLP reactors are you watching? Oh ho 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 ho! Too many. Too many to attempt to list. Trust me, it's a hell of a lot and I'd be here all day. Do you watch other people's reactions to MLP stuff you haven't seen yet? If I don't have enough interest to watch it on my own first, then yeah, I'll watch Blind along with someone else. Yeah, usually I'll check out the videos of people putting out reactions that I'm sub to, regardless of what they're watching. Uh, but I mostly go for the abridged stuff. I, I love that. What other series do you watch besides MLP? I mostly watch Let's Plays these days. Uh, but lately I've been looking up and watching all the playthroughs for Beyond Two Souls. Otherwise, as for shows, I'm watching Adventure Time once a week for my reaction videos and catching up with Red vs Blue when Shan Moore puts his commentaries out. Have you heard about a channel named Inkpots before? Yes, yes I have. Some of the commentators I'm sub to have reacted to his animatics, so of course I watch them through them. Coming from a fledgling commentator here, how do you go about avoiding spoilers? During an ongoing season? Well, I'm helped by the fact that I'm an active part of an anime forum that has a general pony thread. Someone will post a link to the new episode when it's available, and I'll paste the link into my downloader. Episodes can only be discussed under spoiler tags, which is why I never see anything. Sorry, but I don't have any tips for people without that luxury. You just have to get lucky, I guess. Uh, what's your least favourite episode from the show besides Mysterious Mary Well, Some pony to watch over me, just for the first half of Applejack cringe. What are your thoughts on the staff of MLP Friendship is Magic possibly adding a fifth Alicorn Princess? They managed to add the third and the fourth just fine, which is of course Cadence and Twilight, 
So if it were true, then I'd still give the show the benefit of the doubt. If they're on their game, MLP's writing team can make almost anything work or make sense within the context of the story. If My Little Pony could have a crossover with any show, what would you want it to be? Um, the golden era of Fairly Odd Parents, maybe? I want to see what a person like Cosmo would get up to in Equestria. That has hilarity potential all over it, especially if he hangs out with Pinkie Pie. What do you think of the Little Mac and We Fit Trainer shipping? I don't pay much attention to any shippings, to be honest, so I have no strong feelings one way or the other. We Fit Trainer's kinda cute though. Can you name your favourite to least favourite of the main six? As before, being last on the list does not mean I dislike you. Pinky, Dash, Twilight, Rarity, Fluttershy, Applejack. Who do you like more, Sweetie Bot or Thrakazod? Thrakazod, without question, by Azathoth's screaming mouths, MAS trumps FIW for me, all day every day. The writing is just so good, and not enough people appreciate it. Have you ever seen Dan vs or Littlest Pet Shop, and if so would you lol if Dan vs Pinky happened? Yes to all three of those questions. Um, we finally get to off topic. Have you heard of the anime, Engaged to the Unidentified? Nope. Would you react to Drawn Together? Yes, actually. As I've said in the comments recently, I'm going to start watching it when I've caught up with Adventure Time, which sadly won't be for a while because Adventure Time is going on hiatus while I watch Season 5 of MLP. And there's a lot to catch up with with Adventure Time. But Drawn Together will come! and Atticus reacted with giddiness so I know it might be something worth doing. Have you ever watched any shows on Disney XD? Only Gravity Falls. It's a fun little adventure for what it is and the thought put into the lore is certainly intriguing but I looked at the programming block now I've not seen anything else. Plans for 2015. <laughs> this was asked in January. <laughs> So a lot of the stuff I'd have said I plan to do is already happening. I've successfully resumed my Adventure Time reactions, I've set up a Patreon, and pretty soon I'm going to be starting a Let's Play of a JRPG I played as a kid. My only other plans for 2015 are to enjoy myself with Season 5 of MLP and to continue enjoying what I'm doing. Do you like Creepypasta? As long as I'm in the mood to read it and it isn't too long, then sure. I browse the X board on 4chan every once in a while, and I do sometimes read the pasta threads. If you had to form a basketball team out of the ponies in order to fight the Monstars from the movie Space Jam, with two main characters, two side characters, and one background character, who would you choose and why? Uh, for main characters I'd use Pinkie Pie and Applejack. Pinky because she's the closest pony to a Looney Tune, and Applejack because she's competitive in sports just like Rainbow, and they have their natural earth pony strength on their side. For the side characters I'd choose Big Mac and Bulk Biceps to add some raw power to the team. And to finish up with a background character I'd choose Vinyl Scratch, she helps save the day in Rainbow Rocks, so she could also potentially help my team in a match. Have you ever planned on doing a Let's Watch for an anime? Also, what's one of your favourite anime? I've considered doing Let's Watches for anime before, but I don't really watch anime in general anymore. I, I mostly read manga instead. My favourite animes would be the ones I watched in my childhood. Things like Pokemon, Digimon, Dragon Ball Z, Beyblade, Yu-Gi-Oh! Stuff like that. English dub stuff that came on kids TV. So many great memories. I still have my Pokemon figures, my Yu-Gi-Oh! cards and my Beyblades. Have you ever seen the online series Terrain of Magical Expertise? Nope. Or the anime Fairy Tale? Yes. Or Danganronpa? No. Do you think you could do a reaction vid to any of them? Sorry, but for now reactions are filled up. It's Adventure Time right now, then I'll be watching Season 5 of MLP, and then I'll be jumping back into Adventure Time, followed by Drawn Together. So, you had a look. And I probably wouldn't watch anime anyway for a reaction because of uh, removal rates. I mean, the stuff that is being kept up at the moment, not taken down, 
from other reactors are things I've already seen, so there's still no way of knowing. Have you seen The Legend of Korra? If so, what did you think of it? No, I have not seen Legend of Korra. I loved the first series so much that I prefer to imagine that it ended there. I've heard some not so pretty things about Korra despite some of the things it does right and I'd just rather my memory not be tarnished basically. Props to Toph still being badass though, that, that, that I approve of. Could you try to pronounce my last name? This comes from a person named Christian Huayman. Huayman? I'm going to say Huayman. Do you associate a moustache as being the sign of an evildoer? No, because I have a moustache and I am most definitely not an evildoer. As far as you know. I know you have no tattoos and will never get one, but if you had to, what would be your first and where would you have it? I will probably have the phrase apple to the core written on me somewhere, wherever it fits nicely on one line. It's short and simple, and you wouldn't automatically associate it with ponies. I consider it the perfect MLP tattoo. What is your opinion on lesbian ham? This is an inside joke, folks. Pay no mind. I have only one reply to this. Miss Mason is Anne Summer's favourite customer. Autobot or Decepticon? Autobots transform and roll out. Have you ever watched some meat spin while riding the man train? Choo choo. Choo choo yourself, good sir. Have you ever had a friend that's had his nose broken on your bed? Yes, and it was you. Somehow you avoided bleeding all over my bedroom floor and successfully made it to my bathroom. Good times. How did you grow this glorious beard? It just grows naturally. Make it stop. Even if I shave it off, it comes back stronger within the next two weeks. I'm like a big bushy hobo right now. I'm probably gonna shave very soon. What is your accent? I can't tell whether it's Oxford or London. Neither actually. I live in Nottinghamshire. Uh, right on the border of Derbyshire. Derby dad, Nottingham mum. What's your favourite brand of tea and why is it Tetley's? Sorry to disappoint you, but despite being English, I'm more of a coffee drinker. And the only brand my family buys is Yorkshire tea. We're not that picky. Have you played any or many tabletop role-playing games, such as uh, Fate, Dungeons and Dragons, or World of Darkness? No, nothing like that. When I played tabletop games, it would be things like Scrabble, Sorry, Simpsons Monopoly, or the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game. I know you watch Red vs Blue, but do you watch anything else made by Rooster Teeth? Nope, I'm just not that interested in their other stuff. I watched the trailers for Ruby, but I couldn't get past the animation style. That's just a personal preference thing, sorry. What recording software do you use? My webcam is a Microsoft Lifecam HD 3000, which is probably outdated by now, but it serves me really well, and the software I use with it is called Microsoft Lifecam. It's been very reliable, aside from that one crash, so I have no reason to change it. Uh, the Cobalt Legion demands to know, are all the posters behind you print-offs, or actual posters, and which is your favourite? All of them are print-offs, and most of them are great pieces of fan art I've found online. The pictures all over my walls represent my personal history in the realm of anime, tunes and video games. One picture for each individual show or franchise. I've got all sorts of things up there such as Crash Bandicoot, Air Gear, Beyblade and Soul Eater. I couldn't possibly pick a favourite picture considering that each individual picture is hand-picked out of my art collections, making them all my favourite in their own way. If you had a brainwashing machine, who would you use it on? Someone I could get a shitload of money from. You see, someone who's socially awkward like me um, would find it very hard to get a job. Uh, so, if I got a shitload of money, that would never be a worry. If you could wake up tomorrow in the body of someone else, who would you pick and what would you do? In the lieu of the previous question, I would pick a rich dude and have them write me a fast check. Job done. Are you wearing socks right now? No, actually. 
I'm also shirtless because fuck it, no one's home and I have the freedom to wear what I want. If you could be any age for a week, what age would that be? I want to return to the age when I could play around in the kids section of a restaurant. All of that climbing frame fun. Ponies in socks, hats or oversized hoodies slash shirts. Which is better? It honestly depends on how each individual pony could pull off the look. You know, it's down to the picture itself and how well they pull it off. Have you ever eaten anything you weren't supposed to? Such as a crayon. Well, I did swallow a marble when I was young, but I don't remember it coming out the other end. Who knows where the hell it ended up? Do you sell yourself short in any aspect? Most of all, the quality of my own work, the stuff I create. When I was in a creative writing class, I always presented my work while braced for a backlash of harsh critique, but I always ended up with unanimous praise and hailed as a good writer. That's the area where I sell myself short. Uh, what's your favourite Offspring song? Now for the bass line, for the chant along, and you know the overall iconicness of the song, I'd probably say Self Esteem. Yeah, that's one of their golden oldies. Uh, can a match box? No, but a tin can. What do you think of the Scottish? I think you're represented by a brilliant comedian who goes by the name of Frankie Boyle. You what, mate? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, yeah. Uh, well, you daft cheeky queer looking cunt. I've been walking in these fucking woods a lot of years, mark my words. And I've never come across such a fucking cheeky bastard as yourself. Don't get too fucking close, man. You will be getting a fucking backhand. Don't let this fucking porno trash fool you, I'm telling ya. Man that needs to sort these fucking streets out, cheeky cunts like you walking about, fucking spouting your mouth off. Skinny lanky piece of piss steam. Are you a wizard? Nope, you must have been fooled by the beard. May I steal your soul? My soul belongs to my beard, and the beard is not to be messed with. What would you do for a Klondike bar? Nothing, because I haven't tried one yet. And I probably never will, because they don't sell them here. Do you ever wonder why we're here? In the middle of this fucking box canyon? No clue. Do you do the do? I do not do the do. What's your favourite word that starts with a Q? Now the context of this is this guy replaced the word questions with quesadillas in his sentences, which is why he asked me this. I'll be going with the word quote, because it's something I like to do and it's related to my cutie mark. What's your favourite video game? Like with most things, I can't be expected to simply pick one. I mean, I love the original Crash and Spyro games, Atelier Iris Eternal Manor, Beyond Good and Evil, God of War, Skyrim, Sean White Snowboarding, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, and many, 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 many more games. Picking one will always be impossible. How much time do you spend making your PMVs and pony shenanigans? As long as it takes to get them done. In the midst of procrastination and working on other stuff, or Vegas being an absolute bitch to me, uh, shenanigans are currently averaging about one volume every two months or so. I'm not sure how we're doing for progress on 11 because Vegas is crashing a lot lately. But yeah, it, it's done when it's done. Have you ever watched the anime Hey Taya? Well, I've heard the intro, but no, I've not watched it. And from what I've heard about it, it wouldn't be my cup of tea anyways. It can be construed as kind of offensive because uh, they take big leaps of logic with events in history. Uh, what's that thing on your face? It's called a beard, good sir. Get an education. Are you answering no to this question? Maybe, maybe not. It's all up to you, my friend. Why am I asking so many questions? I assume that you're bored and that you want to kill some time. Have you ever played Team Fortress 2, and if so, who is your favourite class? No, I haven't played it. I've seen SFM videos of it, and based on the introductory videos, the official Meet the series for all of the classes, I think I like the characters of Scout and Heavy the most. Who's your favourite Pokemon? Pikachu! I've always wanted one to sit on my shoulder and shock my enemies. It would have been so cool. 
otherwise I've always wanted to ride on the back of a Charizard, casting fire down below. And how fitting, we're ending on a pretty bizarre question. If you saw a creature with the head of a pony, but has a duck body, an alien arm, a robot arm, spiky hair, a unicorn horn, a demon antler, a deer leg, a pokemon leg, a dinosaur tail with a ghost hand on the tip, an angel wing, a dragon wing with rainbow eyes with dark circles around them, how would you react? Depends how big in its size it is. If it was huge, I'd be terrified and clawing at the door, but if it was small, I'd just stare at it and find it really weird. Probably poke it with a stick. But yeah, wow. That, that was quite a few, and I tried to be prompt but thorough, and I hope I did that. But yeah, thanks for sticking around and listening to me ramble. <laughs> I have no idea how long this recording is, let me just check. Oh, we've done better than an hour. The, the last Q&A was an hour, so we've done better this time. Great. So yeah, I want to give my throat a bit of a rest, maybe get myself an ice cream, because it's humid as fuck over here, which is why I'm shirtless. So, I will see you guys later. Thanks once again for 4K subs. <laughs>